United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart, the team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Welcome to episode 87 of Talking Show, brought to you by, firstly, The Athletic, who are smashing it when it comes to coverage of Leeds United, and now have a new podcast, The Phil Hay Show. Every week, Phil joins Dan Marlin to bring you expert insight into the goings-on at Ellen Road, plus there's breaking news, big-name interviews, including the manager himself at some point. Check out The Phil Hay Show on the link in the description of your favourite podcast app. Also, The Social Maze. If you're no good on social media like us, mm. they're, they're good to um, to broaden your social horizons. <laughs> that should be the new company's logo. Yeah. Broaden well, your I'm, I'm social horizons. That, yeah. <laughs> joke and buy it off me. Yeah, painting it. Yeah, and and obviously the the terrace who sponsor Raggy's Predictor and make some sick mugs. Yeah, and yeah. and um, coasters now. Coasters. And get a BL so your sick mud can go in your sick coaster. So you don't spill coffee everywhere. Exactly. Or mate, if you're in that way inclined. Mate. Mate, yeah. Like pate, but mate. No, pate. I, I call it pate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Yorkshire thing. Right, okay. Anyway, enough of that pate cast. Yeah. Bullshit. Should we talk about Arsenal? <laughs> yeah. Because that, that's a nicer way to start. <laughs> I well, think. Yeah, better than sat, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think we were all a bit excited, but hoping to lose... Going yeah. into Arsenal. It was weird because you really wanted to see us put a shift in. Yeah. But you didn't want that extra conge- congested fixture. Especially with the draw as well. We got It would have been Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah, so and, that, and that happened before kickoff. Yeah. So I'd, yeah. I didn't want us to go through anyway, which was really weird. Then that draw came in and I went, definitely not. Yeah, you That's don't just, that. a, just a game we just don't need. I mean, imagine it, I imagine it would be different if it were Leeds-Bournemouth, but that game is actually being played. On a Monday night at eight o'clock, <laughs> would it be on TV if it was possibly? Well, yeah, they probably would. They would put that it on. Yeah, 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 yeah true as well. Um, and then it kicked off, and it was impossible to watch without wanting your team to it. And then we started the way we started, and you think, "Fucking hell, we're going to beat these." I mean, it was yeah. unbelievable. First, I mean, first half we were unbelievable. In a way, the board, but the first twenty minutes, in, especially, it was a bit like they were trying not to. It felt like they were trying not to score at some <laughs> points. Yeah. Play well, but don't score. <laughs> yeah, I think I well, I tweeted at half time that this has been great. Do this for another forty four minutes, and then just throw it back <laughs> at net. I mean, the, the 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 big thing that came out from that game was Meslier. Yeah, yeah. Um, pinging balls like Prime and Esther. It were an absolute joke in first half. I actually it, enjoyed. It I actually silly. enjoyed watching it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think my, my girlfriend came on sort of halfway through the first half and she was like, why are you smiling? It's nil-nil. Like, I don't care, it's amazing. It's yeah. been really good. I do think that it, it shows how well we cope with that kind of opposition. Yeah. And it suits our game down to the ground. Mm. The complete polar opposite of what we played on Saturday. Yeah. Because they come at us. And we won every second ball. And yeah, we could have been two or three up in the first half. But yeah, back to Mesley, I mean, his distribution were a joke. Yeah. Don't think he had much to do save wise. No, I didn't really. It it was just like But his feet his footwork would it were like pinpoint. It, they didn't have to move. Yeah. It wasn't like he's putting it into space, he's putting it to feet. Mm. And that's like forty, fifty yard passes to yeah. feet to to the flank. It it were unbelievable. To say he's what, nineteen years old. Yeah. He's making his debut for for a team. He's had to sit on the bench for a long Long periods of time, not get his chance mm-hmm. against it's, the it's Arsenal top, yeah, in, in quotation marks. But it's Arsenal. It's away from Premier home. League side, yeah. FA Cup, and you think it's 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 a big big ask. And he just did not look phased at all. It's a strong Arsenal starting lineup as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's not much different to a Premier League match day. Yeah. I think they were all a bit like they all just seem to go out and and play with no fear. Robbie Gotts, yeah, they were good. Didn't look Again. out of place at all. The exact same setup you can give to to Robbie, you know, he's what thirty odd games on the bench, never used, um, and gi- and given the uh, starting lineup, and uh, again you're up against a, a Premier League midfield there, it's not like you're playing against 
their under 23s equivalent or their kind of second team. Um, and he yeah, held his own. A lot of well, yeah, he definitely held his own. World Cup winners, yeah, and top top players like mm-hmm. David Luiz. I think he would dig up fifty million at one point or something like that. Mm-hmm. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's is crazy. And I mean, fifty million could maybe buy you Leeds United. Well, but I mean, you look at. I think Harrison were a standout as well. They were brilliant on the right hand side, which was strange mm-hmm. because we only really see him on the left hand side, and. He's been, shall we say, inconsistent with his like end product, so yeah. to speak. Not he's providing with goals and assists, but his decision making sometimes not the best. But every time he got the ball on on Monday night, we were driving forward, cutting inside, and either finding a pass to a player in a shooting position or shooting himself, and he just looked electric, like like well, like he'd just been on some. Mad shit before game. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, they were all a bit like that. It was like they were wired. Yeah. Whether that, oh, well, they will be just. I don't want to say they've they've taken some kind of <laughs> performance enhancing drugs or <laughs> out, no, but they were, they were up for the occasion and the. Well, we, we were the polar played. opposite of Arsenal, who looked flat. Who, yeah. Who just looked like they're just going to kind of roll out and go. Oh well, we put a strong team out here. I know they're doing well in the championship, but they've dropped a few players. We'll just steamroll them, and and we were in their face and just did not give them a a rest. I mean, who was it? Was it Arteta or was it one of the Arsenal players who came out in the press afterwards and said they were a nightmare to play? It against? was Arteta, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were, especially that first. I mean, it it he must have given them a right rocket at second half because yeah. it was a different Arsenal team that came out second half. But I don't think we were outplayed still. No, no, I, I think there I were, think we were just pressed. There were well. chances. At, but they played a lot better. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and and again, but that that's what it is. And we would certainly showed that we could hold our own. Um, and like you say, if we'd have taken the typical Leeds United thing, if we'd have taken some chances first half, I mean, maybe that Arsenal comeback wouldn't have been enough to. If we'd have scored two or three, which we should have, really. And to be fair, the way that um, he hit the ball for the goal, if he hit it cleanly. Yeah. I think Kidder might have had a better <laughs> chance of saving it. I think it's just because it was so scuffed. Yeah. So scuffed. Yeah, he's got away with it. That he's kind of got away with it, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I think we all said after the game we were proud. Yeah. Well, that, that was what we said before the game in the podcast that as long as we go there and show what we're about and don't lose by a lot. Yeah, exactly. And we did that. And, yeah. We all deserve it. I don't think any player looked out of place, even Berardi. Like, I thought he had a yeah. pretty solid game. Mm-hmm. Everyone looked pretty assured. Um, it's just like typical. There was one player that looked out of place, Did Granite you? Xhaka. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have been Which, on the pitch. Shouldn't he? Old, yeah, he's a he's a disgrace. I, I don't even understand. I think I think Arsenal were close to selling him at one point, and they should do because. Well, I've Arte- never. Arte- Arte- is claiming that he's coming and, and convinced him to stay. Mm. But why would you? He's literally just kick anything hard. Yeah, well, I think walking liability. Yeah. I saw a tweet that says, uh, and I think it was from an actual football pundit. Can't remember who. Saying that Calvin Phillips is the football that Granite Jack and yeah, yeah. you were. I think that was like Adrian Drew. I think they said that on top. I think it was, yeah. I think, and I mean, it's probably true. I mean, he, the way that Phillips played and marked Ozil out of, out of the game. Yeah. And I know people have the, the kind of digs about Ozil that is is not really that the he's player that used shit. To, yeah, but you, you, look at our, you look at Arteta's. Um, First run of games and Ozil were very much an integral part in that. Yeah, um, they made a lot of space for Ozil. He used to drift. He, he was drifting out wide, um, collecting the ball and doing what he used to do. Um, read that on the Athletic, by the way. <laughs> and um, it was obviously effective for him, and he put a lot of good performances in. Um, but he didn't have a sniff, and I think Phillips did an absolute number on him. To be quite honest, and if he can do that against. Someone of that quality, because he is quality, is a is a World Cup, is a Euro winner, you know, and he didn't look. Well, let, let's divert a little bit on that then. That Phillips on Saturday, um, had Southgate come and watch him. Yeah, I, I can't see Southgate being there for anyone else. Why? I'd, I, th- I think he's you reaching think, a bit for Ben do you, White. Do you think, think the performance? I'm not saying he's a bad player or anything like that, but no, right now, right now. He's, he's played but half a season in the championship. I think that's maybe there's there's, def, there's definitely centre halves a, a lot of centre halves ahead of Ben White yeah, in the pecking yeah. order. Whereas defensive midfielder is is a kind of problem area for yeah. England. Because I think 
it depends what you want from your defensive midfielder and how England have played recently anyway, well, especially at the World Cup um, last year, or well, year before now. Um, Fuck me, it feels like yesterday, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that sort of holding defensive midfielder that they think Declan Rice is, but he isn't. Yeah. He's more of a, a playing sort of defensive midfielder, but someone who's going to sweep up like Calvin Phillips does. Does that dirty work, but then has that range of passing to get out and, and do stuff. I think for England, um, I don't think the defensive line for England is set, so I don't think we're very solid at the back. So they do need someone who can disrupt play yeah. before it gets to them, which is Calvin Phillips. Um, so they need someone who can disrupt play and progress the ball. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, It's almost like back to basic stuff, really. Um, and... Phillips has that range of passing where he can move it onto the midfield next to him, spread it wide, put it down the middle. Um, and I think he showed that on um, Monday against Arsenal. He's, there were a montage made of his of, of yeah. basically his, his game and a lot of it was disrupting play and progressing the ball. And I think that I think that's prob- that probably could have attracted that performance. Yeah. Could have attracted Southgate to the to Ellen Road on it's Saturday. It's a shame that it's taken that because a lot of people and a lot of pundits, you know, not just us bleating on, you know, with our Leeds United hats on, um, have been saying the same thing about Calvin Phillips for f- since last season, really. Yeah. Um, and it's it, and it's a shame that if if it literally has been Southgate watching that game, going, oh, I'm going to have to get down to Ellen Road on Saturday and see him. Yeah. See him. It's te- it's a shame. I've always said that he's had a bit of a blind spot there. And, it, and, and he's already said he's always said mm-hmm. it. You know, if you're playing the championship, you're not going to play for England. He needs, I think he needs to see that he can do it at a certain level, and that is a certain level. Yeah, playing against Arsenal is a certain level. Yeah, but but I mean, hopefully that's that's kind of turned his his, his mind round and, and said, well, you know, you know what, maybe if he's if he is bossing every game in the championship, but and, and he can take that step up. I mean, but I don't see why why he sh- shouldn't have had anyway. Without especially when in a position where we have been lacking. Yeah. Because you talk about Declan Rice, like I say, I, I don't think he's suited. I've watched Declan Rice a lot, um, and purposely because I'm, you know, if West Ham are on or anything like that, I'll try, try and watch him. And he's immobile a lot of yeah. the time. He's pedestrian. He doesn't do what Calvin Phillips did. You know, Kevin, Calvin Phillips isn't ever walking around. He's sharp. He's yeah, sharp, he's yeah. he's constantly on always the move. into space. Always. Um, again, Eric Dyer's played in that position as well. And, Eric and he, Dyer. And, and he's five years ago. Yeah, we're probably it, a, a exactly. really good was, player for that position, perf- but I don't think player, he's. But I don't think he's that right now. So I think it, it, it makes sense for him to be to be looking at Calvin Henderson. 100%. Henderson, but again, how is Hen- Henderson the same sort of player? I don't think he is. I'm just I'm just no. pointing Henderson, him out. but just to compare it sort of to Leeds and how we play. Henderson is more like for sure, as we've mm. discussed with the all stats out. We lads, he's like a minus eight, a more defensive. Yeah, minus eight. Yeah, yeah, I like the minus and plus eight. And but that's yeah. Go on. One thing that all stats out we lads did also point out is that Phillips is very much not the Yorkshire Perlow because he's not like Perlow at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've thought that since we've seen. Yeah, Perlow was Perlow spraying balls around one of the best passes in the world. Yeah, Phillips has got more grit to his game, but I guess that's the Yorkshire side of it. He just fits nicely in the song, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah. And yeah, the the uh, Yorkshire pair though was like let's not get all pedantic about it. It's, it's <laughs> I just I just liked it. They kind of shut someone down with some stats, and it the inner geek in me just got a bit excited about it. But it's Perlo, but if you were in Yorkshire, it'd be like this, yeah, because he's got the grit. It's, there you go. Is is a is 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 a Premier League footballer? Yeah. He is a Premier League. Well, it will be next year, yeah, regardless, regardless, yeah, regardless of what we and do. To be completely honest, if I don't want to say it, but if we aren't to go up, it'll be picked up by a solid Premier League team. Yeah, not someone who's fl- flirting around with relegation or even in the bottom half. It'll be picked up by a top half Premier League team. Yeah, yeah, because he is that good, and is 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 future England like material. Sheffield United. <laughs> oh, oh god god <laughs> oh <laughs> so, not, like, come on on, on that note we'll go back to Arsenal <laughs> um, any other sort of standouts uh, no I don't think so the referee stood out should have been shit well that's just because Jacker should have had 
I mean, it was so funny that he's, he's, he was putting himself about the pitch four or five times. He was like he was trying, like, good. book me, book me. <laughs> yeah, come on. But then Clicks does it once. Ah, oh, I mean, yeah. it's he gets just booked. a joke. I mean, it's, like, it, well, it's the consistency side of things, isn't it? It's, it's the age old it? thing. Anthony Taylor, or it? Is that what the yeah. referee was? Yes, Anthony Taylor. Um, it was, is it an experienced Premier League referee? Yeah, which most decisions he was getting right, but that was just shocking. The kick out by Lacazette that goes to VAR. The, the thing no, is... No, 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 no. I'm talking about consistency here. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Fair. talking about consistency. Son gets sent off the other day. With, was it against Le- was it Leicester? Who, who was it against? Uh, I can't remember who it was against. I've stopped watching Spurs since Mourinho well, went there. Well, he's... Some off the ball that goes to VAR, it looks absolutely yeah. nothing, but he gets sent off for it. That that trip right in front of and Andy Taylor did. as well, um, and it and, it, and it's did not now. Now I'm not saying that they they should be red cards, but if one's red and one's not, that's not right. Even yeah. if it's gone to VAR, it's just. I think my think my thought process behind it is, if you want to watch it again through VAR, the amount of times I did. You've obviously seen something in there that's not right. <laughs> like you said, I'm not saying it's a red card, but it's the process thing, isn't it? You've like, obviously seen something there. Yeah. It doesn't change and he's obviously kicked him. Yeah. So what are they deciding that how severe it is? Yeah. Well how hard did he kick him? Yeah. Well then it comes to how hard like if I punched you, how hard did I punch you? Whether that And that's the thing about the sun thing, it was not a hard kick. It was kind yeah. of it was more of a he was on the floor and he kind of kicked it up sort of yeah. thing. But, then you can go back to like it, France ninety eight I mean. with Beckham. Yeah, exactly. But at the end of the day, they got, he got a red card for it through VAR, yeah. which was missed on the fields, completely ignored. And VAR Japan twenty two thousand and two really won it. Were it, it France ninety eight or Japan? No, France ninety eight. Beckham. Yeah, all right. Against uh, Simeone. Yeah, geez. The uh, the other one that got checked by VAR for violent conduct. <laughs> Barry Douglas, <laughs> Barry Douglas, putting um, Socrates, whatever his name is, Papa Doppelopoulos, <laughs> head yeah. on his ass. Socrates, yeah, and like, then nearly gouged his eye out. Yeah, I like that. I was, re- I was just waiting for the gouge, and I thought, go on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you shouldn't be gouging people's eyes. But he didn't, did he? No, no but <laughs> his hand wasn't by his face. <laughs> he sort of just like rested on his head, did <laughs> yeah, it? Just like I'm going to give you a fringe, mate. <laughs> That's the thing as well. Did you see finger fringe? <laughs> Arsenal um, tweeted out a video, that video of Socrates going down the line, holding like two or three Leeds players off, saying Socrates, making it like he's some like big old tank. And I was like, he literally fell over. <laughs> Socrates, <laughs> fell like over, Hercules. Then someone put his hand on his head and went, oh, ref, come yeah. on. Um, it was ridiculous. No, some of, some of the Arsenal players were a disgrace with the level of theatrics as well. Especially is, is that, Premier League, though, that? I mean, is that what we've got to look forward oh, to? Oh, yeah, in Premier yeah, League? 100%. Yeah, like if you think the way that like championship teams stifle games against us, it's worse in the Premier League, by far. I think so. It makes me hate football a lot. The, the bigger teams in the Premier League are so protected. That's yeah. why. So they get every decision. Mm. I have this weird thing about, and I don't know why, but I really want Arteta to do well at Arsenal. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't have any reason why. There's just something about him that I quite like. I think it's that... I feel the same. I, I want him to do well because I think guess it's the the Pep Guardiola thing and and playing football like that. You'd think it'd be very similar, mm. and you want to see that exciting football. Well, yeah, because it 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 brings yeah it brings another team into the league of playing a yeah. A, a, a I think it was football. there was a a conversation. I think it was after the Spurs. It was Carragher and um, and Neville, mm. and they were on about how teams play now and. Maybe five years ago, Jose Mourinho going in and making the team hard to like beat, everyone liked that because they liked it. But now it's, just it's totally pragmatic. changed. Mm-hmm. It's totally changed that, that Bielsa and Guardiola, the managers that are going to play in a good way, an entertaining way, Pochettino, mm-hmm. everyone wants to see that. Well, you do, yeah, of course you do. Football is... A form of entertainment, so you don't. Yeah. You no know one goes to watch a fucking nil-nil draw. But remember, but that's what half but, the teams in this league want. But remember, teams only started playing out from the back this season. Yeah, <laughs> who said that? That moose, moose. fat knobhead. <laughs> he's a right knobhead. He probably pissed me off. No, he proper, only, properly warmed me up. That I know, but it's only it's only started this season. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go on to on to Saturday then, I guess. Do we have to? Yeah. 
Well, we're a Leeds United podcast, so we have to talk about. I know, but well, I I, I was discussing off air just before we came on how confident I was going into this game. Yeah, well, I was because um, we just we just gone hell for leather against Arsenal. Yeah, held our own. Yeah. Looked good. Looked probably the better side over the ninety minutes. Certainly, first half absolutely bossed them. And you think, you know, if we play anywhere close to that, we'll. Bop them all over the place, as that Arsenal fan TV guy yeah. said. I like that. Yeah. And um, and what actually happened was, wasn't that to be at honest, all. I don't I think mean, first half we were too bad. Well, first half was a typical kind of, well, I say typical because we have had some decent first halves. But it was a it was your kind of Ellen Road performance this season where yeah. we were just quite measured. We were the better team. We were the only team in it. We weren't taking our chances, but it gets to nil-nil at our time, you think. That were the we've, we've seen. I this said to one of my mates that were the biggest thing getting to nil nil at half time. Yeah, they would have taken more from that, well, yeah. than what we would. Yeah, with, with the chances I guess we had as well. There was the Harrison one, which well that should be one nil. It's as simple yeah, as that. Yeah, he needs I mean, to score a, that. He, he has to. It does come at him, I guess, a bit quick, and it, it's just to the other side of the post. But yeah, we oh, need he, to be scoring he, that. You know, he's not he's not not put it massively wide. It's it's he's missed it by inches, but he needs to put that away. Yeah. And that's a really good opportunity. Um, you have got the Bamford one where it's on his right foot and he's it's just. Pee- but with pee- that one, he had the time to step the player and go with his left. Yeah. Oh, he had loads of time. And but, you're just thinking that's that's gonna. I mean, I mean, we we had a quick discussion before we came on that I was watching him in the warm up, and I don't go on warm ups because end of the day it's just a warm up. And but it was like that in the warm up. Is Bamford panicking again? I don't know whether it's panic. He, he just looked. Is he got to a point where he thinks I need a goal? Quite possibly, yeah. Because when, when was the last time he scored? Well, technically, West Brom. I mean, it's not his goal, is it? No. But West Brom. Yeah. Came, I mean, that's the irony. The West Brom. He comes on at half time. He changes the game completely. We look so much better with him in. He's. It's an own goal. It's probably going wide, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, it's it was, going well wide. It's he's it, had it, that influence. It, it, he's on had it. that influence. It's all right. It's an own goal with a, a Bamford assist. Um, he he plays well against Arsenal. It's the bar. I can't remember any other kind of major chances. Yeah. He he should be confident. He should be confident, especially that second half against West Brom. Is it? I don't. Is it because Enketi has now gone and there's no one to challenge him? I, I would. He's I, a professional footballer. They can't have exactly, that attitude. I was going to say. I, I kind of raised it as a bit of a devil's advocate after the game to my mate about that. Kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. And I'd hate to think that that would be the case, and and especially with what we've achieved. And I, and I really don't, to be honest. It, I get that because he has become, in a way, very much a Leeds United player. The first half of the season, he, he, mm. the first time where you kind of think, yeah, he, he kind of gets it now. He mm. puts, it puts in performances mm. and the way... Even with no reward at some point, it was putting in the performances like for the team side well, before, well, before self kind of know, thing. Arsenal game, yeah. he were in his element. Yeah, he, he, were, he, were, he were relishing it and he were loving going up against those those defenders and he were doing what he does best. And Is that because of... How football is in the Premier League to the Championship, where I'm guessing Wednesday's defenders are a bit very much more niggly and mm. getting at him and and ruffle him up. Would that have had a play where I, I don't really see David Luiz being like that? He's more of a. Do you know? I think it looks like a, he's got a bit of a dark side. I don't. I don't see him being. But then again, I mean, like a Championship defender, no. Because I'd like to think he thinks he's a better footballer and he'd be a defender against yeah, them. I suppose anyway. they are marginal gains, aren't they? Mm. You you only need them if you're not good enough. If that makes sense. not good. Yeah. Enough. If you've got something to make up. Yeah. But then again, when we look at it, look at the performance as a whole, and we talk and we isolate, you know, Bamford here, right? He's missed two chances first half. He's, yeah. He's that one is it straight at the keeper? He's, he's got the other one where he's at a tight angle. Yeah. More about that tight angle later. It's exactly the same for their goal, and I think we got a corner from it. I don't know whether the keeper, but yeah, I thought he did the post with that one. But yeah, it was a weird one. I just remembered he, that he yeah. appealed for it straight away, yeah. and, the, and the and the goalkeeper didn't seem to 
I thought that, it hit the bothered post, about but it, it was. But, so that's first half. Second half, can't really remember any Bamford chances. But then again, we 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 as a team went to pot. So you can yeah. you can actually there was start the one, talking about maybe he didn't get the. Um, there was one from sort of six half, yards so. where he skied it, and I think the defender probably does well to sort of get in front of him. Mm. But you'd like to think he takes a bit more control there than oofing it into the roof at self stand. Mm. Yeah, but ultimately, as a team, we've come out second half. And we've just gone to shit. Yeah. We 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 uh, get by in first halves because we have that energy. And the big thing that I think we've... And we've sort of gone across it a little bit, but I think the big thing is we're losing control in the middle. Oh, there were, there were big gaps. Yeah. Second half, there were massive gaps in our central midfield area. Huge. And I think that's sort of come about at least since Cardiff, when we've had that bit of a shake, we've maybe a few games before that as well, we 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 are, we are missing, and we've said it, we've missed Farshaw, but we are just missing a central midfielder, and that's why I was a bit surprised that Robbie Gotts wasn't at least on the bench. Mm. I guess we had Shackleton, but we don't really have anyone to replace Dallas as you a see, sub. You see, I personally think that Click thrives... With a natural number 10 next to him? Yeah. So start Pablo. If he's I, fit, start Pablo. I was I was surprised that Klitsch went off for Hernandez. I thought he was I was Dallas. surprised, yeah, yeah. I thought exactly the same as well. I thought, the thing is, I don't want to slag Dallas off because he puts a shift in. He, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, the way he started the season at fullback, you, can't, you cannot fault mm. him. And he's been given a job which... It's not a position he's used to. Yeah, I tell you what, I'd have him back at fullback. I'd have him at left back because Barry Douglas, I was campaigning for him to start. Yeah, because um, I thought he's put in some decent performances recently. Um, I can see why he's being subbed off because he was having a mare at the start of the second half. He just wasn't. He, he was losing every single duel. Yeah, and as soon as his number comes up, I turn around to Neil and I said, "What this game does not need now is Gianni Alioski at left back." Yeah. It just did, because we were losing control of that game, and that is not what we needed. No, it's mm-hmm. not. And it is part, partly his error for the goal as well. Yeah, it was his error for the and, goal, I think. And it, it, it was weird, and I, I haven't wrote, wrote them down, but we actually, it, Gianni Alioski, Alioski actually got a mention on the football ramble, which is obviously all football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About his, his stats came in on, coming on um, this week, and it was terrible. I mean, it, it was the amount of... So I don't think he won a tackle. Mm. He got dribbled by twice. Um, he didn't make any sense. All these things. He was just, he was absolutely awful. Mm. And going forward, just as bad. Yeah. I think he had two crosses, n- neither of them accurate. One yeah. of them was so overhit, it bounced just before the other touchline. Yeah. And go out for a throw in. It was, it was shocking. <laughs> it really was. We need that. I guess it's the, back to the control thing that Alioski's good when. We're attacking the side and we're, we're fully on top. Um, Douglas, we've known he's, he's had his injury problems, and I guess was it Kadeem Harris, their winger? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, Murphy won it. Mm. Yeah, Murphy. Murphy, who scored the goal. He, he's a ah. tricky, fast player, and I don't think Douglas can keep up with that. And if a player starts getting the better of him, he's going to start to struggle. Pace yeah, wise, he did, yeah, he did look like he was struggling. You could see why he was yeah. going to, why he hooked him when he did. Um, but Which yeah, I don't, but, but Alioski wasn't. The I answer. think I'd have still left him on. <laughs> yeah, it's one of them. It's as a team, we need to, we need to. All right, we're getting they're coming down there right, our left all the time. But if we get all of the ball and control the game like we were doing the first yeah. half, it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? They can't attack us down that that flank mm. if we've got the ball and we're controlling the game. Um, and then the goal. A lot of, I mean, I'm not taking any blame away from Kiko. You, you shouldn't get beat at your near post, but I don't think it's as cut as clear as that. That so it was, it was a hard shot, uh, a fast shot to sort of save, and it was perfect to get between the keeper. It probably could have been positioned better, but to get between the keeper and the post, it was pretty much perfect. Just so fed up of going up against opposition and them just scoring with their one shot on target. Yeah. 
I'm so fed up of it. Well, and I'm not saying it's the, every time it's always Kiko's fault or anything like that. It just it just seems to be happening week in week out. No, we we create so many chances, can't put them away. Mm. Our opposition create one chance, bang, goal. Like what? This is the keeper that has kept twelve clean sheets this year. Yep. Yeah. But who has also conceded well some silly goals, very mm. silly goals. Mm-hmm. I think what there was a there was a stat. I think the last few games it's been like seventy five percent of shots against him have gone in. So he saved twenty five percent of his shots. Yeah, in the last six games it is. Yeah, that's but right. I, th- I think there's a lot of context to add to that. There is. Yeah, of course there is. But again, one context thing is is it is it um, concentration? Mm. A, a lot of a lot of like goalkeeping pundits and stuff like that will say that's one of your biggest. Yeah. Kind of challenges for a for a team like they'll, they'll talk about it with um, Allison at, at Liverpool. Yeah, you know, he's had, he's had, yeah, he's had no to do all game, and then when he's been called upon, he's made a brilliant save because his concentration yeah. is it concentration? Because I don't know, like you say, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be conceding those, those I'm sort of goals. Not in a position um, to turn on any of the Leeds players at the moment. I don't think. To, to openly slag them off and say that they're not good enough because they've proved that they are yeah. so far. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think 100%. there's a difference between... 100%. I mean, I thought... And I'll probably say it. And I, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. But I thought Bamford was a bit of a disgrace on Saturday. I think I used them oh, words. Uh, okay. Maybe that was a bit too harsh. Yeah. But I thought that was a bit on par with the Derby playoff game. Uh, no, nah, I think... No, I would disagree with that. I don't think he's had a good game. We we haven't even talked about it. he did actually score a brilliant goal by the way yeah <laughs> we haven't even talked about that I mean I, I'm in the cop so I don't know but Re- um, linesman's put his flag up straight away I, I don't know there was I, a, I, I haven't a, looked at any someone sort of put an image angle. on Twitter and I think if you, if that's going to VAR he's off <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd go with offside on that okay. I, I don't well, think but, you but, can but Bamford's finish is really good in, yeah. in that in that respect. Um, I would say he, he's had a much worse second half, but so has the team. Yeah, mm. um, he is. I think if we've got a, stri- a fit striker on the bench, he gets replaced in that game. Yeah, which which and, is another question. But that's not to say he was. A di- I don't think he was a disgrace, and I don't, and I don't think he was as bad as he was against. Tottenham. Why not give Ryan Edmondson a chance? I just don't think Pearl's racing. I think we're we're back to last season with the Izzy Brown sort of thing. I just don't think he, he sees anything in him. If he, he would be on the he'd be on the bench. Yeah. In the this way, game, he would be on the bench. The, the way that yeah, the way that he is, any player who deserves to play first in football, yeah, or be at least being around the the match day setup are there. Yeah, and he openly said like he felt guilty about not being able to give Robbie Gotts game time because he deserves it. Yeah, but it just doesn't fit in what we need at that moment in time. Is there not a call? Now this is maybe going back to like. An old English way that is it not a call just to give him a chance, even if he's not putting the work. Something for someone to grab hold, of, like all right, and say to him, "You're not doing this. What you're not doing? What I think you should be doing to play." But circumstances have come about, and I need a striker on the bench because we've got no other strikers. And if I put you on, you do something and you go grab that chance, and then that gives them that lift, like. That's how Sam Byram's career started. We yeah, had no yeah, right backs. Yeah, we were waiting for Lee Peltier to sign, and Warnock just put him in. Yeah, but Warnock's the manager, not Bielsa. It's Bielsa's way. Like, Bielsa has his thing. Or, on the other side of it, is is it a code for Bielsa to say to the board, "Go out there and get me a striker"? Well, maybe because because I d- I'm not. But that work- wasn't going to happen with what we've got in the 23. Yeah. I'm happy to work with all these players that I'm bringing through: Casey, Struick. Got Stevens, I'm happy to put them in, but on the striker level, no, I've got Bamford and that's it because Tyler Roberts is injured. And to put Edmondson in would be very short term, um, even if it's to prove a point, it's very short term because I mean, I don't think he's good enough, but you've got to think of how that could affect Bamford's confidence as well, just being dropped or replaced by someone who's completely unproven. But- I'd, I'd like to think that Bamford's a mature enough of a player to think, all right, it's not going for me this game. He's had a few 
poor shots or whatever. And it's just one of those that, yeah, it's not going for me this game. It's going to do something else. But does it benefit Edmondson putting him into a high-pressure environment? Because it is. Mm. The, and it was. I mean, the atmosphere was getting... Toxic. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That It's like fight or flight, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but I don't think that's how Bielsa works. He nurtures players. He doesn't give them ultimatums. And that is an ultimatum. You either you go out there and you swim or you sink. But if he sinks, but then so what sing, the Not so much it? sink. You can always go... But he's done it with... You've not seen anything of Alfie McCalmont since Stoke when he had a sort of poor game. You've but not that, seen anything of... That was a cup game, though. It's different, isn't it? it you, that, that's, that's no, the the, that was still his place. chance to to play, and he wasn't that good. And we've not seen him anywhere near the first team since. But look, at, look he, he was the example of Gotts. <clears throat> he's obviously good enough to make the bench, so he's good enough to make a, make a team. But he's never, ever thought he was... This is the match situation that I'm going to put him in. Unlike Shackleton, where... At Swansea, I think he's just got levels. I think he's got levels, and right now Edmondson's not even making a bench where we've got no fit strikers other than Bamford. I mean, like like I said, with Shackleton against Swansea last year, he came in and played right back, and then ever since then, I mean, we're playing in the playoff games. Uh, mm-hmm. If if yeah. he's playing them, he's ready for football. Do you know what I mean? He's ready to play in a Bielsa football team. So I agree completely with what you're saying. There's levels, and I think there's certain players that aren't meeting them levels. Yeah, from the 23s, and there's. I mean, look at look at um. Stevens, ever since he's come back and got to full fitness after his, his kind of ban, he's been heavily involved with first-team yeah. football. Mm. And that's only because he's good enough. But is what what I mean, what we can't ignore is the fact that we need a striker. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And we need one quick, really. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not as defeatist as I've seen on Twitter, I mean, I, I tried to avoid Twitter completely over the weekend just because I knew what it was going to be like. This week I've gone back on and, you know, I mean, it is, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there and there's a lot of panicking and, um, you know, I just think, I just think it's a fan base. We're so scarred yeah. about before, what's happened. Let's, let's, but it, but it is, I mean, it's very important that we do get a striker in. And it, so, and it yeah. would be it would. Seas- almost season defining, really. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, well, we, I think we've shown that we can't. We can't go. We can't go. We, we can't we've go. Just having Bamford. We've just now. So we we need someone in. We need bodies in. Um, and hopefully they're going to be good enough, and hopefully they're going to work out into the way that we we play football games as well. On to like how Twitter's been and and the sort of transfers. What. <laughs> I think everyone's sort of gone straight into panic mode. Yeah. And I can understand part of it that there was a lot went on last year about um plan B's and and it not happening with Dan James. That, that Dan James was a, a totally weird situation that I don't think you'll see again unless you've got a club that are in Swansea sort of thing where they're wanting to sell anyone they can and that's the the owners wanting to sell anyone they can. And you've got someone who knows the football, like the English football, where Dan, Dean, Hugh Jenkins probably knew that in six months' time we can get five million more or seven million more for Dan James mm-hmm. than what Leeds United were going to sort of pay in well, the summer anyway with the loan well, and whatever. I mean, everyone knows that Leeds United don't have oodles amount of money to throw at transfers. Yeah. So straight away, if Leeds are in for your player, you know that they're not going to play the top whack. Yeah. Even in the championship, and and similarly, we can't. I mean, I've heard arguments about. I mean, again, I don't want to ro- kind of trawl up old stuff about Dan James and everything like that. Well, why didn't we just go out at the beginning of the transfer window and just you know pay what they want? Because we don't. We we've got to be. Yeah. We have got to be more sensible with the with the money that's because you do but that. It's like the whole and thing, you, and you pay over the odds of what we could have actually afforded, and he does his ACL the next day. I think yeah. what you need to <laughs> you know. It's so cliche, but it's it's not a game of FIFA manager mode. Yeah, no, it's not just you like a player, you're in, you sat in a boardroom talking to him, you sign him, done, bosh. Yeah, there's, I think I I tweeted, but you've got so many fingers in so many different pies. You've got clubs talking to clubs, clubs talking to players, clubs talking to agents, players talking to agents. Yeah, there's so many people which 
in a way, it's too many cooks spoil the broth because well, well, you're looking they're all looking for the different yeah. sort of outcomes. So if, if we look at who our our plan A is right now in the striker. Shea Adams. It's Shea Adams, right? He's who, I think, two weeks, well, maybe a week ago, it got to the point where I think we'd sort of given up on that. Yeah. yeah. And then at the weekend, it's a game-winning assist. Yeah. He, so he's involved. He's got a manager who was wanting to keep him. Now, whether or not he's flexing that thing to say, well, you know, give me give me another yeah. striker that's better than him and I'll let him go. And not. All these things are happening. You've got a board that want to cash in on him. You've got a player that's rumoured to be wanting out. You've got all these different things mm. that are all in play. And they've all got to be, you know, and it's not just going to be as easy as, oh. The thing is. It's all it's all worked out and we've brought him in. Brought him in. Yeah. The thing is, it, you've got to think about how it's perceived because we only get a certain part of the story through media. Cool. So we've got Phil, who is informative and reliable, but we, you know, he, only, he can only tell us what he, the information he's given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, so I'll give an example. So it's reported that uh, Che Adams is unhappy at Southampton. Now, is he unhappy at Southampton or is he unhappy because he's not playing at Southampton is he, and he's yeah. not getting the game time? Is he unhappy in Southampton as a, a place? Is he unhappy with Southampton as the club? Is he unhappy with not playing? Exactly. If it is, I'm unhappy with game time, that can be changed. It can be mm. brought. It, the, all it takes is the manager to say, "You're in my plans." You know, you, you've come on at weekends. You've you've provided a match winning assist. Yeah. You know, you're in my plans. I want you in my squad, and then that's a, a vote of confidence from your manager, which all of us round here know what that's like because that's just what it's like at work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's different. Um, so if that's the case, then fair enough. But then if it is the case that he's actually genuinely unhappy down south, he wants to come back up north. He wants there's, to. There's definitely something there, and I think it's along them lines that he he wants to move. Yeah. Obviously, we're interested. So um, we said Southampton want to sell, that the board want to sell, but it's just coming round to where it needs to be. The the coach and mm. and and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'd just like it to be wrapped up very quickly, but, but I just don't yeah. think it is. It's just it's going to rumble on it. If. We, well, I just, I just don't know. I mean, I mean Phil said that it, it's not even but, but down to money because Southampton have said they wanted a million and ten million in the summer. I think there's a little sort of thing of what happens in the summer. Mm-hmm. Is it if we go up? If we don't, is it we have to pay ten million in the summer? I think that is probably a sticking point because I don't think Leeds United will have ten million, especially when you've got. Costa to pay for it, 14 million, were it something like 15. that? 14, 15 million. Another 10 million. The money will come from Calvin Phillips being sold because yeah. that's going to be, if you go on last summer, 30 million, 25, 30 million. So that, a lay amount for that. But then that's then dependent on when does Calvin Phillips get sold, when do they want their money? And it'll come down to stuff like that. If they're saying. Yeah, it might be going to the Euros. Yeah, if well, yeah, and then that could put him on either he moves before the Euros mm. or he moves after the Euros, and that is such a big stage as well. I mean, we're not just talking Premier League moves; we're talking across the continent, and yeah. that's when it starts getting silly. Mm. I mean, if he goes to Euros and bosses games against Spain, Italy, what whatnot, you know, that well, that's a crowd it. That, from a Leeds United point of view, would you accept? Say, if someone bids twenty million before the Euros, then he goes to the Euros, and you can put ten million on that. Mm. But then, but Leeds United then needed that money before the Euros to pay for Che Adams. Mm. I think there's all that to sort of think of and that oh, yeah, money definitely. sort of management. Yeah, I think as a fan base, we're of course we're impatient yeah. because we and there's ways of showing it. But every football fan who supports club just wants the best for the club and they want to win and they want to be in a position to be promoted. That's what they want. Um, the reality is, people are employed who are intelligent and know how the transfer yeah. window works. Um, there's been a lot of, on that, I think there's been a lot of people who think that we just got to when Enketia went and went, oh, we need a striker now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when it's been actually... And you know, I bet you'd, we've you been could dim- go into Water's office and they'll have an A4 piece of paper of players and how much, if they're available or, or whatever and, and what they can do and what they can't do and yeah. a whole sort of, 
I guess there'll be a file on on who replaces Eddie and Ketty and well, what they're looking for. Perspective on that is we watched Ben White for two years. Yeah. yeah. We've been debating whether Eddie was going to go back since about September. Yeah. yeah. So if we're doing it, don't you think the club will have? You know, it, yeah. It, 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 but it's not so much as easy as, oh, we just want him. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, the, the whole Shea Adams thing, obviously, we, you know, I think you discussed it on a podcast. Just, it was, I think it was Gary had brought it up saying that that is the t- perfect type of player that, that we want to be going at. And then obviously yeah. that, that kind of was coincidental in the, in the fact that the club were actually going for the, I think one thing, it shows ambition for the club. Yeah. We're not just going out and going, right, we need a striker because Eddie's it and yeah. is back. Oh, he's going to be a bit hard, so we'll not go for exactly. him. Exactly. It's, I mean, show, it's showing that we, we, we're actually thinking about it and going out now. If he doesn't come, and are we are we shooting? Are we being yeah. too ambitious? Have we wasted too much time going out, going to someone after too ambitious? I don't think so. No. Everyone talks about this season. This is it. We, it's make or break. We have to do it now, and we we all know we have to go up. Yeah. Well, if we don't so. go up, Bielsa has gone. If we don't go up, Phillips is gone. We're back to square one. Um, you know, we won't be signing Harrison. We won't be signing Ben White. Yeah. All those players will go and it will be a big rebuilding thing. And it will take, you know, it, it, we've It'll seen take how, at least another two years because you're not going to get this someone. The vision is to get out. And you're not going to get someone like Bielsa. No. It's once it's, in a lifetime, it, Bielsa. Yeah. And it's the only really way of going up with the shackles of profit and sustainability. Yeah. As in... This is the resources that we've got. We can't really add to it much. You've got to sculpt them. On and that, it, and this is the only way we can do it in this way. On that, I think the board, I say board, but Rodrizani has received stick. Um, you know, he's received the potless chance. He's received all that kind of names. But think about it: if Leeds United are promoted to the Premier League, which we're still six points clear of third, exactly. How much more is the club worth? So you say, oh, he's just coming in, he wants to make money off us. Well, all right, you might 200 do. million straight but, off, I reckon. Exactly. So does say it... Say we're worth 50 million now in Premier League, it's at least 250. What pe- as it stands as the club right now. And what you need to understand as well is, he's losing money mm-hmm. building this squad. He's losing money bringing Bielsa in. He's losing money signing Costa, signing Harrison. All for us to be promoted to the Premier League. Yeah. Everyone, so everyone wants it. Everyone wants that promotion. Everyone wants it, yeah. And I understand those frustrations, but look at the big. Just look at the bigger picture, right? We will be in such a better place if we're promoted through TV rights, through being able to keep Bielsa, being able to keep star players, and sponsorship. Yeah, exactly, and yeah, we will be worth more money. And it makes sense. And if he wants to sell us after we go up for a profit, fine. He's a businessman. It makes sense. But at the moment, he's doing. The right things. He's made the clubs more sustainable and well, just safe. A better place, yeah. yeah. Than any owner has in the last fifteen years. So yeah. he gets stick, but it's unwarranted in my opinion. Yeah, and there's there's probably things that he could do better and things maybe that he needs to think about before he tweets. But Yeah, take the Twitter account off him. Yeah. Come I mean, on. there was a, a picture <laughs> of him. Um, I think it was hotel in Doha, which everything going on with QSI linked every couple of weeks <laughs> doesn't really help. No, yeah. maybe not. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, and people on that people say, why don't you just sell to them? Because, but it's not as easy as that. Because of course, it's not. It's like I you have a car, and I'm like, well, I'm going to give you two and a half grand for your car, yeah. but it's worth three. Are you going to sell that? You could find someone who's going to give me three grand. And then in, it could be a classic car, and in five years' time or a year's time, it could be worth seven grand. Mm. You're not going to just give that up because as as much as he's, he's a businessman. Yeah. And on that, we'd be a lot more appealing to QSI if we were a Premier League football club. Yeah. It's simple. Of course. Well, we just talked about how hard it is to get out. And they'll know, they'll understand... Because it, we are shackled. We are comp- the profit and sustainability. They, if they, they if, are completely shackling the club. If they come in now or next season and we aren't, we haven't gone up. They can't. They'll have the money, but we won't see it. They can't throw it. <laughs> and it's not because they haven't got it. It's because we are physically not in a position to do it. Yeah. And if we do do it and we don't go up, we're fucked. Mm-hmm. 
Completely. Yeah. Job's fucked. Might as well go home. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> um, so, and I think, and I think that's that's what it all is, isn't it? Everyone knows that it's just it is make or break this year. It's, yeah. It's not this project that you know, like last year, it was kind of like, oh, you know, we we spurned it, but we always kind of thought, well, we've got another shot at it. Hopefully, if Bielsa stays, and he won't stay. In, he won't stay another season in, in the championship. I can't see it. I just can't. And these players well. And it's not because he doesn't like the club or love the club. It's it's one of them where it's like, if I can't do this in two years, mm-hmm. I can't. And it, it's almost like saying, if I can't do it, you deserve someone better. Mm-hmm. In his eyes, that's what it is because he's a humble was man. It, do you know what I mean? Was it something Phil said um, that Bielsa's, if it, when Bielsa does leave, it'll be with, sort of with a heavy heart because he's sort of bought into what leads and and what we do. Yeah. Well, how we are as a city, as a people, as everything. Well, he, he wouldn't have stayed if he didn't. Yeah. I think it's not just the football for him, is it? It's, it's, it's a bit of everything. Yeah. And he definitely has enjoyed his time. And yeah. like you say, he's, he's, I wouldn't say fallen in love, with, but certainly gets it, gets the whole thing. So um, back on to transfers. <laughs> As it, so, yeah, we're, we're in for Chad Adams. Chad Adams, not Chad Adams. Chad, Chad Evans. Evans. Chad Evans. Maybe he could do a job. He's scoring at Fleetwood. Yeah, and um, yeah, Che Adams. Um, but there is, from what we've found, backups there has been um, Gray from Watford. Yeah. I can never remember his name. I get mixed up with Demari Gray and Andre Green. I mean, if it were Demari Gray, it'd yeah, be Gray, that'd be nice. <laughs> but but uh, can't, can't see, see it. yeah, <laughs> can't see that one. Um, and there was Carly Woodrow mentioned, Luke Freeman in the sort of ten. There's been all these players linked. I mean, there's there was the fella from Man City. Ian. 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 Ian, Ian so from Manchester. Nobody knew of him last week. Yeah. But then this week, he ended up in Italy or somewhere watching some games. So you know, yeah. And then everyone's kicking off. Oh, <laughs> we've <laughs> lost that one again. Yeah. And but it could have been but, shit. But, well, yeah, it could have been. And we could have... I mean, there's a Turkish lad. I, I can't remember his name. I'm not seeing much uh, about him. Emery Moore. Yeah. He's a bit of a dick. Um, well, we, we might like him. I, I don't know. We, it, it could be any reason why... If he's gone to Italy, it's because he he wants to look at other options. Maybe Leeds are looking at other options. I, I, I don't know. For people to start saying, we've lost Damon, we've lost, it, it don't work like that. And there's a lot, there's more than Leeds United chasing promotion in the championship, right? Yeah. And there's only a limited pool of players available that are going to be any good. So obviously there's going to be more than one club linked to a player. Yeah. yeah. Because that's how it works. You know, in January, especially even in January, it's even more limited in January. Because it's if the club are willing to let him go, mm-hmm. you know. And I'd suggest that in January, and as much as pe- teams have made good signings, maybe like Scott Sinclair to to Preston, Preston and Middlesbrough made some good young ones, but yeah, the Roberts loans, and Nemecha. But they're sort of players. Maybe a lot of teams were in for them, mm. but I don't think they're the level of what we're looking at. We're looking for proven, yeah, proven track record. Which is what we need. Simple. Do you know who else has got a proven track record? The social maze. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Seamless. So, so, so <laughs> they've been sponsoring us again for the nineteen twenty season, offering social media management to the range of to a range of businesses. The team are experts in your customers engaged and I've totally messed that. Keeping your customers engaged and connecting your brand with the relevant content. The Social Maze are massive Leeds fans and work across a range of sectors, including sports events, celebrity booking agents, hospitality, construction, NHS, cleaning services, advertising services, and more. The best bit of is outsourcing. The best bit is outsourcing social media to the Social Maze costs from ninety nine pound per month. If you have a business or know anyone that does, check out the Social Maze on social media or visit the Social uk for more info. I need to record these before <laughs> I do them. Yeah, I don't get why we do it. Makes life easier, doesn't it? But then we can't have a conversation about it. Oh, we could we just talk about it after? We could. Yeah, maybe we'll pre-record it. Get Gary to do it. He's got a yeah pre-recording voice. Get Ellie Golden to record it. <laughs> Cheers, Josh. <laughs> Stitch up. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll move on to... Shit out of the week. <laughs> I was going to do Raggis Predictor, but that's still not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a shit house of the week? Uh, Neil Warnock. Yeah. I don't like him. Daniel Ayala. 
Yeah. Just for being Daniel Lala. So uh, Moose. Moose no. is a dick. Yeah. What about Chef Wednesday for fucking celebrating like they'd won the cup or the league yeah. or whatever? Oh, yeah. What they about that? Like, the, someone put a, one of the players had a scarf around them. I mean, look. Well, I, this I get, is a big I game get, for them, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. Well, the, I mean, got, it was. It, it was quite embarrassing. It, it takes ages. I'm in the cop and now I'm up towards the top. It takes ages to get out. And all of a sudden, I hit. We're on the, I'm on the steps and I go, wait, wait, wait. And yeah. I looked up. Then it was a fucking cup final. Yeah. yeah. It was, but the, it, it, well, it, 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 it was their cup final. They've not got Sheffield United anymore. And then the nearest, what, Rotherham and Barnsley. But it's not a derby, is it, Ben? It's not. <laughs> we, had, we had a big, um, <laughs> a bit of a, a, a heated mass. sort of conversation on Saturday morning. Yeah. I don't think Gary were too impressed with me. No. With that, the silence that I got from him for the rest of the day. I mean, I guess what? They is, were it with, it, it, it's is it a Derby? It is. It's a Yorkshire Derby. It's a Yorkshire Derby. I, I think that what I took a thing of was it, Gary said it was Derby Day. And Derby Day, I just didn't, I don't get that feeling. All right. He should have put, it's a Derby Day. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's Yorkshire Derby Day, maybe. Right, I okay. think he did put that after. Did you watch the video I sent you? The Hertha Berlin one. No, yeah, the Berlin one. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, no, that, that's a derby. Yeah, but is it though? Because it's a bit too friendly. Yeah, but like the. Have you ever seen footage of St. Pauli Hamburg? Uh, that yeah. derby. Yeah, that is a derby. That uh, that's not friendly. No, yeah. but like Liverpool, Everton's a bit friendly. I I can take that. There's still that rivalry. It's, it's to me the derby. A derby is like a city thing, like City versus United or Old Firm or. Tottenham, Arsenal, there are whatever. Big, there are bigger derbies than others, but this. Any time we play any team in in Yorkshire, well, I mean, yeah, because and I'm not looking at Yorkshire's you, Borough. One. <laughs> no, they're, they're not in Yorkshire. That's just exactly Cleveland. Um, Shit up. The Browns, technically Hall, Humberside. I'm not, yeah. not, I'm not accepting but them well, either. So yeah, any time we play, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, is a, it is a derby. And and let's face it, Wednesday fans hate, hate Leeds fans, and it's this, this whole Sheffield. Inferiority complex, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, well, anyone. But no, but inferior. that was instigated by the players. That's the thing. But yeah. Look, let the fans have their big day out, and yeah, look, they've they've snatched it late on. They've scored two goals. They're back up to six. They're all yeah. Let's have that. But the players instigated that. Yeah. And, and I know they what they, had they lost three on the bounce. Yeah. Then they, well, they, then they beat. Um, oh, they've won in right and the, in the yeah, cup. They won in the cup. But that well, that that sums it up, doesn't it? The the players. Took it as their big big mm. game as well, yeah. And maybe one where we're, we're top of the league and a big scalp really in this league with how we play and stuff like that. People just like West Brom, their form's shite as well. Well, yeah, yeah. The, well, I guess we're going to what I, I think I said this earlier um, when we were chatting. Like Brentford, everyone's bashing one off over Brentford right now, mm-hmm. and they're just Brent because Fjord. The, Brent Fjord. Because they're in a bit, of, probably in a, in a good form. They're, they're putting quite a few goals past people, and but they did it with Swansea at the beginning of the season, QPR, and other teams. Us, and, well, us. I, I, well, I don't, I don't think we've done. We've been a good. To, well, we had that good run, yeah. but I don't think we've been as to the best we can be. No, and no, like now, everyone's like, "Oh, Brentford will go up. They'll they'll go over West Brom or Leeds," but they might. They probably won't because. Their run will end at some point. Mm. Mm. So got some, we've got three games, and then they've got, or well, they've got Forest, and then they've got us. Yeah, and we've got Forest in them, so that that could change everything. That's the thing. For better those, or for worse. <laughs> yeah, but all those teams will be playing each other. That's the thing. They're not always going to be. Yeah. Um, at home against QPR. I mean, don't get me wrong. The front three for Brentford. Uh, be careful what you say. Brilliant, there because mm. that's where we're going on Saturday. Confident. No, but I, I, I completely get you. Yeah, we have been we it, almost on a weekly basis. The rival has changed. Yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden now it, it was Brent. Before it was Brentford and oh, I suppose it was Forest because Forest has still got that game in hand, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, going back to Neil Warnock and Neil Warnock said that us and West Brom are only at the top of the league because we're consistent. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> That, that's how it sort of works. Yeah, that's how a league structure works. I mean, works, if you consistently Neil. lose, then you'll be at bottom. <laughs> if you consistently not, win, yeah. you'll be at top. I think, you know, obviously, in a league structure, it's not like a knockout competition where you have one bad game and that's it. Do you know what I mean? 
it's you have won one game and hopefully you get a reaction, which is yeah. what I'm kind of hoping for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Who's shouts at week then, so we can get that over and done with? Oh, let's go Neil Warnock. Actually, I had a dream last night. Oh dear, wait thinking about it. Well, we sat behind Elsa and got Neil Warnock. Oh dear. But That's we not thought, a dream. That's a nightmare. That is a nightmare. Yeah. He's and got one job left in him, but he took oh, us he's, up. He's twelve games off a milestone, is it? Uh, yeah, fifteen hundred. So, uh, yeah, 1500? yeah so something out, like that. Come out today saying he just yeah he wants he wants those twelve games. So he gets the Someone should hire him for eleven and then sack him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. off, Neil. <laughs> Anyone who does that would be my second favourite <laughs> football club in England. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that'd be good. Yeah, give it Neil, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Prick. Twat. Raggy's predictor. Sponsored by The Terrace. I don't even know if I've got a terrace thing on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you had it. No, well, I, I can talk about the guys at the terrace. Yeah. Gary um, goes go away for, for one week. Yeah. Inspired by um, retro kit culture, um, they sell everything from uh, kit mugs, kit towels, kits. Kit, they yeah, kits they've on. even got kits. Yeah, coasters. loads of Leeds United stuff, coasters. Um, yeah, I liked their tweet that they've um, expanded their team and they signed a new guy and they did a shirt thing. Yeah, they did a shirt. That yeah, was yeah. good. They don't they do made, things by They made a no. sign in before we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are they at um, predicting? And they're, all, they're also very good at predicting because they're winning. Um, nobody got any points against um, Wednesday because we all went for Leeds victories. And the guys at the Terrace said a draw. Um, so no one predicted a Wednesday victory. So it's still Young Ben um, bringing up the rear on 27. Then myself on 29. Old Ben 31. Gary 33. And way out in the lead at the Terrace at 41. Um, Marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. So we go down to Loftus Road on Saturday, the early kickoff. Mm. We haven't won in London since December 2017 against QPR, which was against QPR. Yeah. QPR. I've also I was also having a little look today. QPR out of everyone in the championship, I've conceded the most at home. Okay. 27 goals so far at home they've conceded. I'm going to go nil nil. <laughs> <laughs> It's got nil nil <laughs> written all over it. Yeah, um, yeah, they're not in the best of form, are they? Um, no, they were beat by Brent Fjord. Brent Fjord. Yeah, they were awful. Did a, did a job. They were on. awful. Yeah, it was over about over three nil yeah. up at half time, were they? Um, so the guys at the terrace reckon it's going to be a two nil Leeds victory. Gary um, has put Gary his went seventeen nil Leeds. Seventeen nil just to uh, quell a few fears, but then he. Easterly. No, he's, he's having 17 nil. That were his first <laughs> first writing, so one. that's what he's having. Two one leads. Uh, what do we all think? We'll start with you, uh, old oh, Ben. I'm going to go one nil leads. One nil. Young Ben. Two one leads. I'm going two nil leads. Clean sheet. Yep. Meslier starts. <laughs> I think a lot of quite a few people are wanting Kiko to get banned now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, Which what happened? Once before, he starts getting clean sheets again, then they'll do it. Before the game, before the team news came out, I didn't know whether Meslier would have would have started against Wednesday. Just, you know, with the performance that he'd put in yeah. and the way that Bielsa will work and kind of like it's your shirt to lose. Sort I of think thing. you've got I a know, lucky number one. I know. I know it's a it was a cup and yeah, yeah. you've got that, but also yeah, I suppose you um, you should be playing Kiko until he gets banned. I suppose yeah, or, especially or on should you now thirty odd kind of week <laughs> yeah true <laughs> got to be playing him yeah so that's this week's Raggy's predictor go back to my sheet next page let's talk about the athletic let's do it because they're our sponsors as well um, which is a must for most football fans. And I'm really getting into it now. I'm reading all kinds of random stuff. Have you read the article on Steve Guppy? No. I'm not uh, that into it. <laughs> no. But there's an article on Steve Guppy catching £35 fishes. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's worth a read. It's very interesting, shall we say. But right. That's what it is. That, yeah. I mean, we've talked about it for a few weeks now. It, it goes into sort of different things that yeah. you want to read about. Not just the same old rubbish that you get on... There's a really good article the, on the uh, Zlatan statue that's no longer a statue. 
Yeah, yeah there's this one being permanently. They kept on erecting it and it kept on being damaged. Uh, they sawed his feet off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but they kept them. on defacing it and then they'd check. Yeah. Well, his, his nose were the first to come off. Yeah. And then they just thought, fuck that, it. That was yeah. a big part of it. Say, I was going to say, it's a big job getting that honker <laughs> off, isn't it? <laughs> Absolute beak, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, have, you, have you seen why? Yeah, because he bought shares in like the, the in rival like the club. Rival club. Yeah. Oh, but he's a Malmo. So, yeah, he, he, I think he came through at Malmo. and He's born and in Malmo. Yeah. Malmo fan, apparently. Well, that's like one of us, like, get buying shares in Bradford or something. Or, or, like, scum. Yeah. Well, like, se- essentially... I ain't got that much money. They, they, they're more... <laughs> maybe buy, buy Bradford. <laughs> <laughs> a share in Bradford. They're more like, um, like, league rivals. Not so much local, like, just yeah. rivals for the league, I suppose. Right. But, yeah. It, it? Well, well, I think a man with an ego of his that's the thing, he'll just thought, Oh, I'll get away with this. Yeah, I they'll thought he'd still, okay, they'll still love life. me. I'm Zlatan, I hate him, I really do. He's a bit of a dick in here, but uh, yeah, anyway, the guys are the athletic, <laughs> yeah. And Phil, obviously, everyone knows Phil, although I do feel a bit sorry for him on his um, yeah, uh, chat things that he did today, Phil. Well, I think he was. I think he was definitely st- steeled himself for it. I think he knew what was yeah. going to come. I mean, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't catch it today because um, he's got some bollocks. Work, but, um, I think there were like a millions. Have we signed Chad Adams yet? Mm. But yeah, and these podcasts. Listen to podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. The guys from the Square Ball. Yeah, yeah. I listened to it yesterday. It's and just it's an all round great format of sporting yeah. content. And it's not just football either. Loads of American sport if you're into yeah. the NFL. Yeah. Combat yeah. sports, boxing, UFC. Yeah. Loads of shit. It's good. Yeah. Get you can get a free trial. Well, a free seven day trial and fifty percent off if you go to athletic.co.uk forward slash talking shut. Discount. That'll be on our Twitter and, and stuff and on the description of the podcast and stuff like that. Yeah. Get involved. Yeah. Do we have anything else leads related that we need to speak about? I don't know. I've not really done much prep. <laughs> no. I'm just trying to think. There was a substitution that Wednesday made. Did you see? Very late. Oh, oh right he, didn't, he didn't go off at the yeah. nearest possible, yes. nearest place. So. It raised its head again. Are we enforcing that rule or not? Clearly not. Mm-hmm. Because in fairness to him, he did kind of sprint. He oh, well, moved fast. Was it that? Was it the young lad? It was yeah. that young lad. It was the young lad who I right liked after his the, interview yeah. on Match at Day. And then Trindis, he was quite good. He was quite good. He was quite good. I think we struggled with him a bit when he uh, when he went on that marauding run second half and then yeah. he, he went out for a goal kick. He he lost his rag a bit then. Yeah, uh, right in front. Lost of his him. legs. Yeah. No, he got he got really annoyed. But I just thought like you're supposed to come off there. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, I think, yeah. Well, I think what you're saying is his, his saving grace is his then run. Yeah. Mm. But, again, it's just one of these, it's the inconsistency of it all. It's like, you enforce it's it. It's now a, a rule, but it's not really a rule. It's a bit like, I think there was one in the um, in the Sheffield Wednesday game, a foul throw. No, no one gives I think a it foul throw anymore. I think it, it could have Bamford. been, yeah. It, yeah, it was Bamford because it was like, well... Is, I think he jumped yeah, he just through took it. a really <laughs> random throw, didn't he? Yeah. He yeah, like a long throw into box as well. I'm like, um, that's yeah. you're supposed to be, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, throw it to I yourself. Yeah. yeah. What, was he, what was he playing out there? <laughs> Can you imagine him just standing there? Where's striker? <laughs> that's, you. Yeah, that's you, mate. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's just a weird feeling around the club at the moment, I think. Yeah. It, it, would, it, was, it was a really nervy atmosphere, I thought. Yeah. Second um, half. Second All I was said, the nil nil was perfect for Wednesday. Yeah. But well, they'd come for a draw. There's no, there's they, no they doubt They would have taken it. a draw. They would have taken a draw. They came to play for a draw. I mean, there were time where it's the first half. I think I would. But yeah. you just got to think as well, and you look back at when Leeds were under Monk, the amount of times we nicked a point or nicked a yeah. win. And it, it was like, I think I tweeted after, it was the Gary Monk textbook sort of performance. How many times did he mention group in his post-match interview? I didn't listen to him. I didn't listen to him. They said it. Oh, my blood were boiling. I don't even I think I listen to, to Bielsa this week, yeah. yeah. I always went on for mistake. Steak cheered me up. I went on for a Karumi mum. Nice. Nice. 
Yeah, it was nice. I was just a bit upset. I was, yeah. and it. But I'm not panicking. That's the thing. We've got to put things. It's into not nice to lose a derby on derby day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fucking derby though. <laughs> yeah, but you just got to look at it. Look, I'd rather be in our position. We're six points clear. Yeah. You know, all it takes. I mean, when we carved the nine points, the it, what, did it get to eleven at one stage or whatever? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. We went on this run where we were just winning every week, and every and all the other teams were dropping points. Now, all it takes is. To do we, that again. To do that again. Even one week. And, yeah. and we reinstate like, that buffer. And you t- We've got the three games now. Uh, Wigan, Millwall, QPR. Maybe not in that order. Definitely not in that order. order. <laughs> yeah, it's QPR. It's QPR, Millwall. Wigan. Yeah. We win them three. You can then, I think, Brentford play Forest. Or when we play, it'll be Wigan. So if they draw that game, we can then afford two draws because mm. there'll be that gap again there. Yeah. We draw them two, and then it's pretty much a clean run till the end of the season. We've got Swansea. Yeah. Um, we've played West Brom twice. Yeah. We've played. We've we'll played. We've got, we got to play twice. Yeah, we've got to play Brentford and Forest, haven't we? Yeah. But the the only sort of team, I mean, I mean Bristol City, maybe. Mm. <laughs> it's all yeah. gone quiet about Eddie, hasn't it? There was something today. Is that just me being? Um, I don't know where I saw it. Um, I wasn't, wasn't Arsenal going to get in the Arsenal side maybe this weekend or something like that. I was trying for that. Really? But we'll see, I guess. They've got Martinelli and stuff like that. I but wouldn't know. that restrict... Can you, can, you, can you play for three teams in a season then? I have no, no idea. Because if, so if, so. if Arsenal play him, he can't it's go stay out in there for the season, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. Maybe... Or oh, is that just domestic? Could, could he go, go to, to a abroad? Premier League? Would he be able to go abroad? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how it works. What do we think about Jack Clark possibly playing against us? On the, the yeah, weekend? bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not worried about him. Depends what Jack Clark turns up. If it's Jack Clark, Aston Villa, 22nd of December, scoring that goal, then... I still don't think it'd be a problem. I think our defence would know very much about him. Mm. He just doesn't seem like that player who can change a game, does he? Do you no, know what I mean? No. But... Well, which is what he's set out on the. I was going to say he has done do. that. Yeah, he has, yeah. But it's about recapturing it, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't have thought. <laughs> I'm not going to even say it. Come on. I'm not going to even say it because it's just tempting fate, isn't it? But you wouldn't have thought he'd be able to to go, not be involved in any real first team football for six months, then go and make his debut and recapture that form in the all all in one. Well, probably. it's been done. But so points yeah, proof. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why it's tempting fate. But yeah. You, you, He's been with this squad all season and hasn't had a chance. Has he played one yeah. game? Played in the cup? In Stoke? A few sub appearances, yeah. I think, as well. Made, yeah, he made some substitution appearances. Did he? Start of the season, I think, yeah. It'll be interesting. I, I, I generally can't remember him playing. But exactly. we know that on his day, he can't. He, like I say, he did change games. Yeah. At the very beginning of his... And there must be a reason why Spurs paid £10 million for him. Yeah. Got a good agent. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Do you want to see a picture of Steve Guppy with a £35 fish or what? Because <laughs> I've been sat here. Are you going to retweet it after? <laughs> it's just there. Look, look oh, you can go on the athletic. Yeah. And yeah. sign up. Look at the size up. of that bad boy. That's a big fish. Yeah. Steve Guppy catching fish. I think on the on, on big fish notes. <laughs> you say this. Say yeah. this. Say this. Leeds United made the most of their second chance.